cross your heart, hope to die, stick a needle in your eye. Cross your heart, hope to die, stick a needle in your eye. Cross your heart, hope to die, stick a needle in your eye. Cross your heart, hope to die, stick a needle in your eye. The truth hates the lie. And the lie Remember that. That's even in the Bible. This story begins way, way back in 1879. It is a story about the Wesson family. William, who sometimes go by Bill. The Buffalo Bill, the Buffalo Soldiers of the U.S. Nisqually Army, and his blood relative nephew, Charles, who would also go by George. Or MC Carla. And then you had his niece, Charles's youngest sister, Alberta. The story starts. In Washington State, Chehalis, Washington. The Wessons were from the Choctaw tribe. Alberta, mother, was deceased, and at the age of five, she was now the queen of her tribe. They spoke Choctaw. They wrote Choctaw. And they were very noble. They were young, but they stayed in the state of Washington and in the area for a while. But by 1879, they came around the mountain, eastern Washington, Mount Rainier, and they settled in Chehalis, Washington. By 1889, they had created a home in the state of Washington. Now, there is a story about Sanders, and the Sanders story, it says that they found the state of Washington and that they found the state of Washington in 1859, and that the name wasn't changed to Chehalis until 1879, and that they found it because they were going to let the Pacific Railroad run through Washington and through their town in Chehalis. And the Sanders changed the name to Chehalis in 1879. That's what 
the Sanders story or the story, their story says. So, what their story says is that Mr. Sanders found the state of Washington in the good old year of 1859 and that uh, it was established a post office in 1859. Our story is that we settled in Shehalis and we developed <clears throat> from Shehalis, Washington clear out to Woodenville, Washington clearing and maintaining the land and property. In our story, it states that we came around Mount Rainier on the other side of the mountain in 1879, and we settled in Shehalis in 1879. Of course, <clears throat> Mr. Sanders' story it's a little different. He says that he got there 20 years before, and they changed their name to Sheriff in 1879. Alberta, <coughs> who they called Angel, when she was younger, loved to play baseball. And the Westons have been playing baseball uh, since 1850. And that would be their past time. Now, Charlie, who they called MC Carver, wore these hats and these hairstyles and these caps. And Charlie is who they called George Washington. And George Washington had a seal that he created because George Washington would carve everything and he could carve circles. So George Washington created the circle and the wheel. And so the seal of Washington states that in 1889, George Washington settled in Chehalis. And Chehalis is the first town according to Washington, uh, that settlers settled in. Now, by 1889, we had established the seal of Washington, and they had elevated clear out from Chehalis to Woodenville, Washington, which was north of Chehalis. And Along the way, Charles, who we are calling George Washington, would carve landmarks, and he would build high rises, um, as high as the totem poles, because again, he was an expert carver. The initial space needle uh, was constructed and built by 1913. So by 1913, Charles and Bill and Alberta had built uh, the Space Needle. Now the Space Needle was initially built from wood and a rope with a wheel for a pulley. He had got this idea from when he had built their house in the capital. Everything was rounded, and as they were getting older, they were tired of walking up steps. So he figured out a way that they could go up and down without walking up all of those steps. So that was the motive behind the idea of a wheel and a pulley to lift and to bring things down. In essence... Not only did he create the Space Needle with this idea, uh, but he also created what we call today an elevator or an elevator shaft with a pulley. Uh, so Charles was very intelligent and he was very athletic 
Uh, and that is uh, the meaning of the, the name George. Uh, George is someone who is um, not so much as a yuppie, but everybody just knows that he is better than them. And he treats people like uh, that, like he could show you, but you're still not going to be as good as him. Uh, but the Wesson family single-handedly created townships and flattened and elevated and leveled out the downtown Seattle area and cleared it from Chehalis all the way up to Woodenville. This was their work with a wheel and a wagon and they were able uh, to clear. Now you have to understand that they had already fought in the war and they had so many different ideas as to uh, accomplish things in a quicker time, in a greater time, in a longer distance. So they were able uh, to clear out this area. Now, this is the downtown area, and it is right off of what we call the Alaskan Viaduct today. And uh, this area didn't have um, a ton of tall forestry trees. So it was right off of the water in Alki uh, Beach area. Um, so they worked, and it took them about two years to complete that from start to finish. So they started in 1912, and I believe uh, Pike Place Market was the first marketplace that went up, uh, and people would gather down at Pike Place Market where they could trade and purchase and uh, get the things that they needed and conduct business. So uh, in 1912, Pike Place Market was open. And it was very, very popular. Lots of people came uh, in the state of Washington to Pike Place Market uh, to make these purchases uh, that they needed uh, to provide for their family and to keep uh, their houses and their homes and farms or businesses going. And I'm not sure if people are aware of that in the state of Washington or if that is mentioned in the history, but that Pike Place Market, uh, they consider was black owned. And this is what, uh, what was known back then. I hugged the block on the ground, getting my Now, by 1913, William, or who I'm calling Buffalo Bill, he went to Oklahoma. Now, Buffalo Bill went to Oklahoma and struck oil. He came back to Washington State. There, Alberta was working on electricity. They had already completed then the tallest building, the Smith Tower, and the Space Mill. And this is back in, this picture is a picture of Yesler Way. And it is showing the Smith Tower, and you can see the electrical wires and cables there. So although they don't have the street signs uh, and the street lights like we see them now, uh, but this was the beginning of actual lights and power electricity. And so Alberta was uh, the one that did that in that area uh, to light the way for Smith Tower. So today you'll see Seattle lights maybe uh, not very far off of yesterday, but blocks away uh, from that Smith Tower building. Then <laughs> there was the Bon Marche. The Marches were a similar family style 
and they were very hardworking, and uh, they did a lot of business with us at the Pike Place Market, and they were very instrumental in uh, in participating in um, the Wesson family developing this land and, and growing. So they really looked at uh, Buffalo Bill as a hero and someone that they knew and trusted. And they seen uh, the work they had did uh, before they even left the war. So this, before they left to fight in the war, they had leveled all of these things out. And so when they came back, uh, they began to do business through the Smith Tower. Uh, it had upgraded. So Pike Place Market had became now the, the Smith Tower, big business trading. Uh, and the Pike Place Market still existed, but the level of business went uh, from an open market, uh, street market, to a corporate level market. So we're talking wholesale instead of resale. Uh, so we think in those terms. Uh, so now we see Nordstrom, and the Nordstrom family was being recruited. Now the lady in the middle is Alberta, and Alberta was very busy recruiting and explaining to uh, everyone about what we were doing, that uh, Buffalo Bill had tapped into oil, and that we had Smith Towers already completed, and we had completed uh, the Space Needle, and now we were going out to Oklahoma. And so, when they got to Oklahoma, of course, there were our building styles again, uh, the high-rises. Uh, and this was the first building where they conducted uh, the oil uh, tycoon uh, finances. So, they then were able to go up a notch and tell others about how they were able to produce minerals from these oils and what these oils could do uh, and how it was going to benefit them. So you talked about and explained to them that we had owned property, we trap, we trade, we own iron, um, and that uh, there was property everywhere after the war, and he was going back to drill on these properties. And so, uh, at that time, again, it was uh, no prohibition. Prohibition uh, didn't exist. And so they would go out to Oklahoma to Frontier Park, um, is what it's called today, or also known as where they would hold the OK Corral. And... Um, this was another way of them recruiting uh, people to uh, join into their stock market and their stock team. And so uh, they would go to these gun shows and they would show them all the things they were doing, all the things they were going to do, uh, and recruit more people and get more customers and clientele. And so people were just so impressed because they would do these amazing gun shows uh, and they would do all these things that had to do with iron uh, and people wanted to be a part of that um, so oftentimes people would come in and wage and try to have a contest and put money up to see who was the best marksman um, who could build something quicker than the other uh, because they had just became that popular uh, that people wanted to challenge them if they knew someone. Um, so again, they were able to shoot guns while looking in mirrors. And so they understood that this was all of, of, of their uh, ways and their customs and that they originated this. And they would laugh when they would see that people really wanted to be like them. They didn't realize that they were someone to be like. They were really just being themselves. Charles, who we are calling George, George Washington, or Georgetown, George Washington. Charles 
created a wooden tooth and carved it after Buffalo Bill lost his tooth. And not only did he create it and carve it, he dyed it and it was white and shiny as the others. And so these are things that they did out of love, out of love and out of out of laughter. Uh, when Charles made the Studebaker, the wound up car, the wind up car, um, he made the Studebaker because Papa would drink. And they said he would run around. He said he'd see him run around like a mad hatter. And so, like a crazy person just going on. So he was working on this car. And he said this thing, he had it wound up. And he said it reminded him of Papa. So that's how they came up with the Studebaker. The Studebaker alcohol existed before the Studebaker car. That's why he named the car the Studebaker. So as they were listening to how people wanted to compete with them and to act like, well, the stuff they were doing was up and they knew somebody that could do that too or they knew somebody that, that did it better than them, they started to get the sense that people would not ever really be true to them. They understood that people would compete with them or people would want other people to believe that they were better than them. And they start feeling the weight of that. And you know what? They didn't stay down either. They didn't stay down in low form and sit back form. Nope, they just kept on being themselves and they kept on going up. They kept on... Uh, doing the things that were pra practiced in their family and that was accustomed to them. Um, and because of that, I think a lot of people really believed that they were just as good as the Wessons. See, the things that they did were rather odd to one person but someone else would mimic it and take it elsewhere and use it so when it was created by the Wessons it was rather odd but when it was used by others then it was common and it was functional and it was a great idea and so they, they started to see that pattern set in and it really took a toll on Alberta see Alberta could shoot with the guys she was a markswoman she was, she discovered electricity. She was recruiting people left and right to go out to the OK Corral. She was recruiting. And she didn't realize that those people thought she was active. Like she was too good. She was better than them. And so, word got out. Word got out or that Buffalo Bill was running Black Wall Street and that Buffalo Bill was the marksman and that Buffalo Bill found oil and tapped into oil first and that Buffalo Bill and then they got cars and everything. They didn't know what a car was. You have to tell them what a car was. Buffalo Bill and people, they made that. And so when people got worse, they were very angry. They, one, did not want to believe that Buffalo Bill was a black man. And they were very angry. So much so that they had wanted 
post this. It's the best of Wimbledon, Wimbledon, Wimbledon. And they Wimbledon, went looking for Buffalo Wimbledon, Bill. Wimbledon, or at least Wimbledon. who was trying to call himself Buffalo Bill. Because they wouldn't even acknowledge him as being himself. Because they had heard all these great things and all this ownership Wimbledon, and all this royalty Wimbledon, and all of this Wimbledon, education. And they were not going to acknowledge Wimbledon, him Wimbledon, as being Wimbledon. the person that they heard about. And so what they did was, he was in Oklahoma, and outside of Tulsa, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the highway runs right south. And there was two buildings down in the Greenwood area, and that's the downtown Tulsa area, Black Wall Street. One was for uh, your bookies to go and pay, pay your books. And the other was to actually do the exchange. And when they got word that they were looking for Buffalo Bill, they said, oh boy. Because they knew that Buffalo Bill and Charlie or George Washington is who was running everything. So they was concerned when they seen this most wanted poster. They were most concerned. Because it's like, that's the boss. And the boss is on the most wanted poster. Again, Alberta had electricity running in these places. This is, at this time, we are uh, from 1913 to about 1921. Black Wall Street lasted until 21. That's when they burnt Black Wall Street down. Now, Buffalo Bill was the leader of the Buffalo Soldiers who fought in the North. The leader of the U.S. Nisqually Army. Buffalo Soldiers. So, he left Oklahoma and he told the Oklahomans and people there that were had invested into the the stock. So you had the Marches, you had the Nordstroms, um, Sears and Roebucks. They you needed two coins to invest. And Sears and Roebucks only had one each, so they went in together. They let them go in together. They both gave a coin in and that's how they put up for their stock. But at the end of the day, they knew they had to leave Oklahoma. And they came back to Washington State. And uh, the courthouse, that's the courthouse there. And this is back in 1921, 22, 21, before 22, before uh, the actual world expert said. And the state of Washington in the courthouse, they understood who he was. They understood that was the Pike Place market people. And there's a picture there of uh, Charlie, who we call him George Washington, to the left, and William, who we call him Buffalo Bill, to the right, standing there. Um, and this picture is back in 1912, Crescent Park. And they are ringing the stock. Now, they understood that these were the people that was up, even if the Oklahoma people didn't understand that, and the people down in in Stillwater that was looking for them, but they realized that they could be up now. See, before, he was something quite like a hero, but now they had leverage. They didn't have to make him a hero. But they wasn't really looking for him. But they didn't have to make him a hero anymore. So, the Weston family was beginning to understand how people really looked at them. People that were with them were with them.
And the people that had invested in the stock stayed in the stock. They were it out. But they understood that it would probably not ever be the same. More importantly, it was just taking such a toll on Alberta. And they felt so bad. You know, women can be catty. They walk up. Oh, you have a nice body, a nice figure. As if her face wasn't beautiful. Things like that. And just after a while, well, the men around her just felt like they had to do something to cheer up. So Charles, who we're calling George Washington, would write, and he was an excellent songwriter, and he would carve instruments, guitars, flutes, and he would play these instruments and write songs for her. And of course... Buffalo Bill would have a ton of jokes, you know, talking about everybody. These were the things that kept them going and kept them together. They didn't act the part. They didn't act the part. And so, Buffalo Bill said, it's time to act the part. So, they had the Blue Angels, and they had patriotism, and they said, we're going to come up to Washington. Come out here. All our tools are out here. Our equipment's out here. We're going to do a big, they told all the Oklahomans, Seattle's World Fair, 1921. They said, bring it out here, and we can do it big, and we can show y'all all what we're talking about, because we know we've been doing this stuff all of our lives. And so, that is the 1921 World Expo Fair. It was the biggest expedition in the world, 1921. Why do they do our people that way? Why do they do our people that way? Just wipe away the history. See, this is the fair they want you to remember. 1962, there was a fair. But in 1962, uh, there was Woodstock and the Grateful Dead. So who was at the World Fair? Hmm. The truth is, is that my ancestors created the seal, which is a picture of George Washington. It looks like him, does not look like the Sanders at all. In 1889 is what the seal says. And our story is that we settled in 1879. So our story seems more believable. Again, the famous circle, which creates a wheel, a wagon, a pulley, our circle. The coin. We created the coin. With the stock bell as a form of trade. Now, this picture says 
multitudes because this is a picture from the 20s and we all know Lucille Ball and uh, Desi Arnaz Desi Arnaz was related to the Disney's who also was one of the investors in the 1920s during the Black Wall Street investment when they first started investing in the market the open stock market so his family was a part of it and they were fond of her and she was fond of Alberta oh she was smitten by Alberta and just loved and laughed and other people didn't think very much of Lucille Ball but for the fact that the Wessons liked her so if the Wessons liked her the Wessons was someone now she attended and she was just starting as a very young actress and not only did she attend the World Fair, and she's went on different shows uh, bragging about what a great experience the World Fair was that occurred in 1921, <laughs> and that she even got a chance uh, to ride the rooster. And the rooster's a train, the first train that was made by Charles, who we're calling George Washington. Charles made the rooster. And it was a train that would take you in downtown Seattle and take you to the little shopping areas, to the Nordstrom's, to the Bun. Uh, and Charles also made these coins right there in that building. And here's a picture of the rooster. And the rooster is passing by what we call the Moore Theater now. And obviously, Lucille Ball was an actress, and, and all of these things were uh, very up and coming. She even got a chance to ride the rooster train. She got a chance to go to the theater. And so she went on national TV um, stating this. And, and, and saying she was there, and she was so excited about it, and she got a chance to go to the World Expo Fair. And so my question is, why do we want to teach people that the World Expo Fair happened in 1962 instead of it happening in 1921? And why don't we mention the one that happened in 1921? Because I'm not sure of the one that happened in 1962. Again, everybody was at Woodstock in 1962. The Grateful Dead is the Grateful Dead. The World Expo Fair in 1921 is the World Expo Fair in 1921. The Warrior Twins. Now, back to the Sanders story. And Sanders says that he settled in 1876. Or excuse me, 1859. And that he changed the name in 1876 to Shehalis. And then in 1879 is when that name was recognized. Why? These are things, again, and here's a poster of the Grateful Dead. And it's showing the time and the date of the Grateful Dead. Uh, and I do believe uh, that... Uh, this is the year that they're referring to as the World Expo Fair, the same year as Woodstock. And so I'm not sure why, but will we whitewash? And that's what we're calling it. And so whitewashing is taking a story that you cannot deny and you explain away pertinent facts. So whitewashing could be um we'll keep the story about uh, about something big happening but we'll put it in this year instead of that year so that the story can never remain true and so a lot of whitewashing or what we would call white lies um and so a lot of that has happened to my family too um where it has taken a toll and over a period of time people know it's not true they know that the stuff is not true, but then they allow these things. So here is, again, an article of the Post Intelligent. Again, Charles wrote the Post Intelligent. Um, back in Oklahoma, he started writing about the experiences they were having 
while tapping oil. So, that's how the Post Intelligent came about. Now, the Post Intelligent, that article and that actual paper ran in it. I believe they just stopped running the Post Intelligent, like in the 2000s. Um, but these things were done um, around 1913, where Black Wall Street was just starting to happen. And so, um, the Post Intelligent ran an article um, after Buffalo Bill returned and after they burnt uh, Black Wall Street down. Um, and it states that Black Wall Street has been burnt down. Now, this article is like evidence that Black Wall Street existed. The Post Intelligent paper did not come to the state of Washington until 1921, along with the World Expo Fair. So, now you have a story of Sanders uh, settling in Chehalis, Washington. And the reason why we're using Sanders' story is because uh, the state of Washington will acknowledge that the first settlers settled in Chehalis. And so my problem is, is that we must restore what is rightfully ours. We must have that restored back to us. Um, it is clear that the Sanders story don't quite line up. Uh, because if they changed the name to Chehalis in 1879, and the Western story is that they settled in 1879, and they named it Chehalis. And that is a Choctaw word, by the way. Now, uh, the other part is that if you notice uh, uh, the courthouse, in downtown Seattle, then you will see that all of those buildings that they built when we came back were short buildings. They were not high rises the way we built them. This volume article, it says that it's the 16th volume, yet it's saying 1964 on the day. This Baker 1918 Pike Place Market Open Market Will 1924. Again, the Studebaker car came after the Studebaker icon. The car was named after that, the way Buffalo Bill acted on that car. 1788 is when we initially came to the great state of Washington. 1922 to 20 is when Alberta said she was tired of carrying the coins around when she was at the Mayo Historical Hotel in Oklahoma, downtown Black Wall Street District, Greenwood, and said that she was going to start using paper to do her trade. And so they had Charles go and make paper dollar bills because Alberta's back was hurting from carrying all them coins. Those things were done in the state of Oklahoma. So the coins were made in Chehalis by Charles when we were in Washington before the Civil War. The dollars were dollar bills were created by Charles after Black Wall Street. So these are things that we see and know. And again, you still have your electrical power lines, the old conduit electrical power lines running in these towns. And these are uh, the works of our hands. Uh, this is where they made, this building is where they made the actual dollar bill, first printed U.S. dollar bill. The coin, the quarter with George Washington on it, 
was the only one. There wasn't no other quarters. There was no other faces because he made that. And that's what we're calling Charles. And again, these things uh, were made by the Wessons to the point where uh, it, it became so obvious and evident that at the 1921 World Fair, they offered people to get a chance uh, to whitewash and tell white lies on them. So as soon as something was created, uh, they would go and they would take it and maybe paint it a different color and say they made it. They would buy one and put a flag on the back of it and say this is their this is their version. So these are the things and the tactics that happen after we create it and invent it from our own hands and ideas and blood and sweat and tears and our own thoughts and our own laughter. We invented something to show love to one another and our family. And then someone, then we decided to share what we invented. We, we decided to share the joys of that or the pleasures of what we have with other people. And then what happened was they took one and stuck their name on it and told everybody else it was theirs and we wasn't nothing. And so that, that newspaper article is very, very pertinent because it says that that was the time where they could start doing that or they could start acting like that. So yes, it's yours, but we can still act like we're better than that. And so they did that to our whole entire family. From that point on, they would watch whitewash. Again, whitewash says, we'll keep this story, but we're, we're not going to make it a he. If it's a he, we're going to put a pronoun in there. We're going to put a she. Hmm? If it was this year, we're going to say it was 10 years before that. We're going to keep the story. What you said it was the North Pole, we'll say it's the South Pole. We'll keep the story, but we're going to change something pertinent. We're going to change where it was. We're going to change who it is. We're going to change when it was. These are things that they call whitewashing. So what happened was they used so many techniques of propaganda that their whole focus was because we had created enough come on now we had electricity cars we created enough that all you have to do to this one family because we know it's just one family and it's all of theirs rightfully so we are going to bully them bully them bully them bully them and we're gonna whitewash we're gonna white lie we're gonna white lie whitewash white lie white lie lies 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 on and on on and on, you guys. On and on. Everybody can do it. And from that day of that newspaper article from the Post Intelligence, burning 64 acres. Well, they were allowed to whitewash. To change the Seattle Ray Mirror original score book from 19... From 1854 to 1954. Just change it. See, 1854 to 1954. Just change it. See, even if we came around the other side of the mountain, Mount Rainier is still on the other side of the mountain. So Mount Rainier is still there, even in 1854. So our story was. Whitewashing is so detrimental to the system of oppression because that is a major major tool that's a major weapon to just keep on acting like it's true it could be true because I'm going to change this a little bit is that part true and so to continue to do those tactics are harmful to a whole nation generation a world. For instance, or an example, is this the first guy that ever flew a plane? I said Charlie Wesson was the first one that flew a plane. He built planes and flew planes. 
they'll have you believe that my Charlie Wilson flies paper planes. I mean, yeah, they'll talk about Tuskegee, but then they'll 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 they'll, they'll, vilify, they'll vilify it and, and they'll throw some disease with it if you just try to brag. See, these are the whitewashing and the white lies that they practice. So if you try to go up with it, we'll make sure we throw something to it. This could be a superhero that flew a plane, an American troop. Or it could be Ben Laden. That's right. It could be Ben Laden. Depending on what they want you to see and what image they'll have you see and what propaganda they want to use. Yeah. Ben Laden. Bin Laden was trained by the other guy. Whitewashing. Oh, Hitler. Hitler. Was he just someone with strong beliefs in ideology? Was he a great leader? Was he a great person? Was he a great family member? Was he a great militant leader? Had lots of people following him. That's great. Look like me, right? act like me, right? don't, well, I'm all. You got enough people that look like me and act like me and feel like me. That's exactly what I'm That's why I'm To take the gold tooth out your mouth and put it in your pocket. Woo. Oh. There it is. That's the pole. Yeah, that's the pole. Yeah. Oh. Everything wonderful and high tech. I'm loving it. Oh, just look at you. What did we do with that man? How do we feel? Hey. One of us. That's the Pope. Pope. How do you feel on gay marriages? Ask the Pope. Pope. Whitewashing is most disturbing it is very very cool and it needs to be stopped it needs to be stopped again the truth hate the lie and the lie hate the truth It is you knowing your ethnicity without logging into Ancestry.com. Now we all know who that is. Oh, that's little baby Jesus.
Thank you for watching. This has been Cross Your Heart, Hope to Die. Stick a needle in your eye.